Great stuff. Now, please welcome the writer director of Tyrannosaur, Mr. Paddy Considine. I wanted to star in the movie, Eddie Marsan. Hey, Chris. Hey, man. Eddie. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Paddy, let's talk about um, what Tyrannosaur is, because people may not know. We've just seen the trailer, but can you give them the, the an idea of the film in a broader scope? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, I, Put you on the spot. Uh, yeah, Tyrannosaur, I suppose, it, you know, is, is a, you know, people have described it as a pretty tough film, but I, I always wanted the film to be a love story, sort of about two people from two different ends of society, if you like, um, um, who sort of uh, form a kind of companionship. Mm. Um, become soulmates, if you like, because they're both living with sort of uh, fears and difficulties of their own. Um, and I guess the film was just, uh, y y you know, I I'd, I'd acted for so many years that I just felt the need to to begin to sort of write and direct my own work after, you know, having collaborated on other people's work for, uh, over the years. And I thought it was time that I established my own voice. And I think um, Tyrannosaur is the result of years of frustrations and also mm. just sort of, I suppose, making sense in some way of my place in the world, of the of the world that I grew up around. Yeah. You know, whereas Tyrannosaur is a very sort of heightened and at times extreme sort of interpretation of that. Um, I, I guess it was, you know, because you, you write it, I guess it's your voice coming from a place of expression. And, and I, I think I was just trying to make sense of a lot of things. Mm. And uh, Eddie, can you talk about your character and tell us who he is? And um, I play the character of James, who's married to Olivia, and he, um, he's not going to win the Husband of the Year competition. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's abusive, and he's a, a control freak, and he's, in, in a sense, he's the secret that Olivia keeps quiet. Mm. And where did you two guys meet? Because I know, Paddy, you've met Olivia on Hot Fuzz, yeah. of all movies. Um, so uh, you met Eddie on Red Riding, I presume? Or? Yeah, we both. Uh, we were just saying that we. Uh, the first time I saw Eddie was on Frith Street, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> swinging around a lamppost. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, we just happened to pass each other, and there was an awkward sort of, you know, I, I, I know you, and you know, we just crossed paths, and I rang my wife and said, I think I've just walked past Eddie Mars then, you know. <laughs> Um, but it was on Red Riding. I mean, I was aware of Eddie's work for years, you know. I'd, I'd, I'd seen his work and been a fan of his work. So mm. we met on Red Riding. And when I wrote this role, you know, I was, I was trying to think of who would be the ideal person for it. And um, we didn't have a great deal of money to make the film. But um, I knew that I needed somebody who was quality. And because there was some difficult scenes within the relationship between mm. Olivia uh, uh, and Eddie between those two characters. It was really important to me that um, Olivia was comfortable with who was playing James. You know, I didn't want any sort of anybody who was a bit obtuse and, and, and you know a bit method, as they like to call right. it. I needed somebody, a good actor, who could be in control of it and, and really understood that there was a human being there and not not a sort of a superficial monster. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, Eddie kindly read for the role. Because um, he didn't really have to, mm. you know. You know his, his the work, parts yours essentially. His work but I'm speaks for anyway. himself, yeah. uh, you know. But I just needed needed to know how, you know, it was going to work with Olivia, and Eddie was the first actor in at the top of the day, and uh, it just blew everybody away. And then I had to meet another like fifteen actors, knowing that <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd bagged it. So you know, just, you just sped read them really quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I gave them all time, but it, but it was really interesting. You know, having been on the other side of it so many times in the casting chair, going into a room, meeting people, and um, it, it, it's a really sort of odd process being on the other side of it. But you see how it works because you know ultimately, it's not about whether people are, 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 the people who didn't get the role were good or bad. They're mm. just not right for that role. Mm, absolutely. I think Olivia's actually here, so please put your hands together for Olivia yeah. Coleman. Sorry. That's a chair. Olivia will soon follow. Sorry. Here she is. Olivia, call me, everybody. <laughs> yeah. You're late. Sorry. You're late. Sorry. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Were you like this on set? Or yeah. <laughs> yep. Nice tight ship. Um, so, Olivia, can you talk about your character? and You're, you're playing Hannah in this. Who, who, is, who is Hannah? Um, Hannah is, um, uh, on the face of it, a very um, middle-class woman <laughs> with... Um, <laughs> um, 
very strong, she's a Christian, very strong faith in God, and uh, she seems like um, everything is great in her world, but, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, because the, the, it was based on a short s s film that I yeah. wrote, and um, when I made this short called Dog All Together, um, like after I'd, after I'd done it, all I really wanted to do with the short was just prove that I could, could tell a narrative in 15 minutes. Mm. I just thought, looked at it really as, as an exercise. Yeah. Just thought, you, you know, you've talked about directing for so long, see if you can do it. And, um, you know, so I didn't pay much mind to the aesthetics of it, the camera really. I just wanted okay. to, to concentrate on the narrative. Um, and when I, when I sort of put the short film out, people responded to the short film and said, you know, it felt like the beginning of a bigger movie and they wanted to know what happened to these characters. And so I, I just continued to write where the short left off. Because the short's essentially the first 15 minutes of Tyrannosaur. That's right, yeah. And, and <coughs> then um, what happened was, it was the very first scene afterwards where Joseph, um, I don't know if some, hopefully some of you will see the film, Joseph enters the charity shop yeah. a second time where Hannah's character works, because uh, Olivia's character works because he's drawn to her for some reason on a yeah. higher level and he's drawn to this woman. And, but he, he kind of verbally abuses her and dresses her down and makes assumptions about her life, you know, that, that, that she's some happy clapper cake baking, you know, mm. charity, cake, you know, charity yeah, yeah. Uh, case and um, doesn't really know what life's like in the, in the real world, as he puts mm. it. So then that really was the point that it turned because I, I remember even writing and just thinking, okay, well, then l let's see what she's living with. Let's see if you're right about that. Mm. And so the film starts to play with that idea of perceptions and how we sort of take, make assumptions about people superficially. You know, when we meet them, we can't, mm. we, we sort of can't help it. So how much of uh, Hannah's circumstances were set in stone when you started to write her story, or how much of it did the did the, did her story dictate to you? It just happened. <coughs> yeah. You know, and and the way that I write is, I, I think you sh when you write, what works for me is that I just switch off. Mm. And, and you just let the story unfold without thinking about it too much. Mm. And that doesn't make sense to, to some people, but the, the, they, the, the characters, if you trust them and trust the process, they'll tell you where they want to go. Mm. You know, they'll choose their path. And it's a bit like being a, 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 a third, per, like you're conjuring some sort of spirits, oddly, and they're, you're watching this little world unfold in front of you. And I didn't know that was gonna, that, that she was gonna go home and, and she was gonna be in a tough situation mm. with her husband and, and being mentally and physically mm. abused in any way. It just sort of happened. And then um, the, the story just took off, mm. really. And Olivia, did you have any idea where Hannah's story may go when you finished Dog all together? Because I imagine you did one day's work, maybe two days work on, yeah. that, on that? Yeah, one day. One day. Um, no, I didn't. I, I know that Paddy was thinking of a, a short, another short after Dog All Together, um, following Hannah's story. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so I had an, a little inkling of that her life wasn't quite as nice as you imagine. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, no, I, I didn't, didn't know when we filmed Dog All Together what her life was like. And so, um, I don't think. Well, you, uh, where exactly did you, s you s spot uh, Olivia's potential? Because you met on Hot Fuzz, which, yeah. is, a, which is a comedy. Yeah. Uh, Olivia, you know, you're best known for a peep show and, and working with Mitchell and Webb. Uh, and this film is a bit of an, aw an awakening, a revelation for you in, in many ways. But did you know you had this in you? And Paddy, you, did you know she had it in her? Um, no, no, because <laughs> well, well, no, it, you know, I, I just I, I I wanted Olivia in in this film based on her, based on her personality. She was the right person for the job. Mm. She she just is naturally a very caring woman, you know, mm. and I think she's a good girl. And she had all the right qualities <laughs> to play that role. Because I think, you know, you could have cast some actresses in that role who were uh, uh, not more established, let's say, but they're more known for a certain, you know, kind of cinema, mm. let's say. And I, I, I don't think there would have been any revelation because I think you would have been expecting things to sort of go a bit wrong. Yeah. Whereas w with Al Olivia, because she's never been seen in that sort of arena before, in, this, in, a, in a movie with this kind of subject matter that required a, a, a really high standard of performance, you know, to be honest with you. Um, I, I didn't know that she could do that. Mm. Y you know, I, how, why would I? But my, my, I followed my heart because I knew that she was the right person. And I just had to sort of really um, 
really sort of have faith in that. You know, one of the reasons that I wanted to become a director amongst the many of them was that I'd been on film sets as an actor and I'd felt very adrift on film sets. I'd had no help from directors. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I just thought that some directors, I, I realised, don't really understand actors and don't get the best out of actors. And, and I really thought that I could work with actors very well. Mm. And so to see Olivia do this movie and to, uh, to, to undergo a really huge transformation yeah. as an artist mm. was an incredible thing to see. And it was confirmation that, mm. yeah, you were right. You, all you've got to do is follow your, insti your instincts. Yeah. And I, and I suppose if, if any of the actors I worked more closely with, in, in, more intimately with, it probably would have been Olivia. And I don't know why that was. Bec uh, because by the end of the film, it, it, wasn't like, it wasn't like she needed help, but at times it just felt like you were another character off screen just feeding into her mind, yeah. you know. But direction is knowing when to also step away. Yeah. Like the incredible final scene of the movie, there's a, there's a huge revelation in there. Yeah. And I was thinking about this scene and, and thinking, man, you know, today's going to be a really tough morning. You know, mm. I, I, we've got to go to some depths. And she just came in and smashed it apart, mm. you know. And it, it was just an incredible thing to see. To see somebody realize their potential that way was, 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 was amazing. Awesome. Olivia, were you, were you daunted by this role or did you grab it by both hands? Because I know you, you've... You're doing comedy, you've, but you maybe felt you'd been corralled into doing comedy a little bit, and you wanted to try your hand at dramatic stuff. What no, what I uh, I found funny over the course of answering questions is that th there's an implication of choice in an actor's career, <laughs> <laughs> um, which I, I've certainly never experienced. <laughs> and I went into it thinking uh, a little bit of a play, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of drama. How lovely! Of course, it, it doesn't happen like that. And I got my work in comedy and I kept getting my work in comedy and that has been wonderful. Mm. But this Tyrannosaur is a job I've dreamt of since I was 12. I just never got, n n got a look in. You know, there's a list of comedics and a list of tragedians and you're never allowed to cross over mm. or it's rare. Mm. And, and thankfully, Paddy took a punt, you know. And so, yes, I grabbed it with both hands. I, I would have, you know, chopped off hands to try and <laughs> to get it. No one would say no to that part. It's yeah. beautiful. And, and ex the experience. I now never want to work with anyone else ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't say that to my agent. Or Bill Murray. Or Bill Murray. Yeah. <laughs> <He's all right. laughs> um, Eddie, can you talk about working with Olivia on this? Because you came in for five days and you know, played this role, uh, which I imagine was very intense, very very heavy role for five days. Um, can you just talk about how that, that experience? Well, I'd worked with Olivia before on a... On a one yeah, I think so. Film, yeah. yeah. And, um, <laughs> it's very memorable. When we, when we came in and to do, uh, <laughs> when I came in to read with Paddy and Olivia, it was very, very clear to me that um, the thing about Olivia is she has this personality that she's very open, she's very easy to love. And, and as the character of James, you need um, these men love intensely. I mean, their idea of love is very narcissistic, yeah. but they love these women. And they try to control them, because, but they're, and they're very vulnerable, these men. And there's something about Olivia that makes it very easy to act with because she's so open and so easy to love. So therefore, in a sense, this sounds weird, but she's, she's also therefore very easy to abuse. And to, because as an actor, you're only as good as the person you're playing opposite. And, and, and you have all the thoughts that you... When the camera c is on me, all I'm thinking about is Olivia. Mm. And Olivia, I in her performance and in the way she works and the way she creates things, is very thought-provoking. Mm. So it's very easy to do. So it's very, you, you, it's almost instinctive of your reactions. Yeah, yeah. You just, yeah. you know, you, you sit there and you, and, and you want to be loved by this woman. Therefore, it's very easy to be disappointed by her. And it's very easy to create James's warped sense of reality. Mm -hmm. with, with, with any other actress, if there was a hint of vanity in the actress, it would have fallen, would have fallen apart. But Olivia doesn't have that, mm. you know, and um, that's why I, uh, that's why it's very easy to act with her. I don't I don't want to get into too much into spoiler territory, but there's a really important scene between uh, Hannah and James, which is very physical. Um, can you talk about filming that to an extent and working with Paddy and in terms of the sensitivity of that scene and and uh, I guess emotional physical scarring that you know, preventing that, I suppose. Well, pa Paddy was very. Uh very thoughtful about scenes like that and, and as a very nurturing um, presence and made us all feel very safe. So actually, so it seems like that was, was shot two or three times tops. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and 
do, the rehearsal was, um, you don't have to say the lines roughly, you'll be here, you'll fall here, whatever, and then just go. So you never had to, you know, do, I mean, doing something like that 10 times would be a bit much. <laughs> and Paddy yeah. always made us feel very safe. Yeah. And, and we feel very safe together, you know, we yeah. know each other and like each other. And it's, and s as soon as it was cut, Eddie would go, you're right, mate. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So it's it was <laughs> great. There's a great moment, and it didn't make the final cut. And, um, I, and I, I won't reveal the film, but there is an, an attack where Eddie attacks Olivia. And um, in, in the scene, it fades to black. And before we cut, you could just hear Eddie say to Olivia, Oh, God, are you all right? Just like that, you know, quite faintly. And, and I kept it in the film for so long. After it had gone to black, you just heard this voice go, no, no, I didn't cut your eye, did I? That was it. <laughs> he said right. to her, oh, no, I didn't cut your eye, did I? Something like that, you know. And, and I kept it in for so long because it was just after the scene had ended, it was just this taste of the, the kind of dialogue that was about to occur after yeah. the attack. Yeah. You know, the shame takes like over. the shame yeah. and the nurturing. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you did. It. Oh, you know, let me, you know, it was a little revealing to what might that dialogue might mm. be. Absolutely. You know. um, Pat, you've, you've talked a couple of times already about uh, feeling adrift as an actor on movie sets and maybe being neglected by directors. So, is it fair to say when you set your mind to directing this, when you walked on the set for the first day, yeah. that you wanted to be the director that you'd always wanted to have as an actor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, what is, and who is that director? <laughs> I think that. Um, I think that, you know, I th when I started acting, I worked with Shane Meadows and mm. it was the first thing I ever did and he was my mate. And, and so we did weeks and weeks of workshops and this character just developed. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but, you know, all I was doing was making Shane laugh. Right. <laughs> but after a while, this character sprang out the bag and, you know, it became a totally different thing. And as hard as that, that film is for people at times, you know, it was, it was a really funny character to be. Um, and I thought that was what it was all about all the time. And that, because the next time I did a film, it was pa with Pavel Pavlikovsky, another really sort of inventive guy, you know, mm. who, who kind of finds the story as he goes, a really unique way of working. And I thought everybody did this. The only time it felt bad for me, the, the re when I say, I, I, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I, I'm not an actor. It was just that when you go on to some films, there's none of that. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, you know, you've got, you learn the lines and you come in and you hit the marks. And it's more of a technical exercise. And that's where yeah. I failed without all that other work, you know, without that sort of environment. That's where I would fall down. Yeah, yeah. And I realized that, that's, that a lot of that is essential to the art of acting because that's how 90% of films are made. And people are very, very good at that, you know, that, yeah. that kind of work. I just tend, I just seem to fall down a little bit. It, it, um, you know, I, I, I've been on film sets and you, you've forgotten a word or, and, and someone's come up to you with a clipboard and going, oh, you forgot to <laughs> say, you know, and you're just going, oh, shit, this thing's becoming like a technical yeah, exercise, absolutely. you know. And um, it just always felt restrictive at times to me. Or maybe a director hires you for what you've done in the past and just expects yeah, you to do I've that again. Yeah, I've actually said, so, so I had somebody say to me once, you know, yeah, you know, it's what you did on Dead Man's Shoes. <laughs> and I said, like, no, it's not, you know, we, you don't know what, what we did. Yeah. You don't know the, the, what, what was created that day, you know, the, the vibe of it all, you know, everything, the territory, you, you don't know that. Yeah. If I you do that, you, yeah, you're just yeah. like every other actor who turns up, you know, <laughs> you know it, it happens <laughs> to bad actors and, uh, you know. So it's a really sort of odd area. Mm. But I love actors, you know. I, I really do love actors. I love watching them. Mm. And I love watching them on the... I love watching them work. You know, to be right behind the monitor was a, was a real pleasure. Mm. And it was quite addictive. <laughs> you, know, I, I, it was, it, you know, I loved it. But I do think there were... I mean, Eddie's worked with Mike Lee and, and lots of directors. That there are... Uh, there are directors that do sort of uh, I think good directors create the uh, they create a playground for you to to be able to feel safe enough in that if you drop something you can pick it up yeah like an on the waterfront when when what I always forget the actress's name when she drops the glove and Brando picks That's up the glove man. and starts stroking it you know and yeah, it has yeah. all these beautiful connotations well yeah. on some films she dropped the glove 
And somebody go, cut, you know, or the actors <laughs> go, oh, I've got to start again. Or they go, oh, that was really great. We're just going to do another. You drop the glove. Yeah. A lot of people <laughs> miss the moment, yeah. you know. And I think a good director creates the environment for you to drop the glove, Absolutely. you know. So, uh, Olivia and Eddie, did, uh, did Paddy create the environment to drop the glove on this movie? Definitely. I yeah. mean, Paddy's one of, our, one of us. He's one of our own. So, this industry, um, it's very easy to become a director, in a sense. You know, you need to... You, you can blag your way into becoming a director. You mm -hmm. can have good qualifications, you can do a BBC course, <laughs> and, and you can have a lot of ambition, and you can become a director. To become a professional actor usually takes about 10 years. You know? So when you get directed by an actor of Paddy's ability, it's, um, it's fantastic because they're very clear and they know exactly what they're doing. Uh, Olivia, the, I guess it's sort of an attention to detail that perhaps you might not get from other directors? Yeah, well, and also the understanding of what it feels like. So, um, you do. The assumption is that an actor feels uh, is, has nerves of steel and never feels embarrassed, but uh, I, I don't think that could be further from the truth. And, and um, Paddy knows what it's like to feel vulnerable. And you are, you know, doing something in, f in front of a crew of people, and uh, and Paddy just well knowing that feeling and says the right thing has an ability to to say the right thing to the right person in the right way, and that it was lovely. Mm. It was a revelation. And were there any moments in this film, like in, on the Wonder Front, any happy accidents, any happy glove dropping accidents that made it in? Or I can't remember. remember. I mean, <laughs> lots, lots of moments yeah. made it in, lots of bits and pieces, you yeah. know, and... Because um, it's about instinct, isn't it? Because yeah, you, you told me once you cut a three-page monologue without even filming it. Yeah, that's right, yeah. You, you, you know, we'd shot a wake scene in the film, and in the editing suite she goes I'm not sure about this footage because you know that they drop character you can see Peter and Olivia and uh, you know and I went great <laughs> perfect that's exactly <laughs> what the scene's about you know this yeah. is about losing all that weight and yeah. for once in the film being free of all of that stuff all that baggage mm. but then after I'd shot the wake I had I, I, I'd had trouble with this scene for a while getting a location for it and it was like a three page bit of dialogue between um Peter and Olivia and you know in, in, in the in the film she, Hannah's a Christian charity shop yep. worker and it was all about him asking her about g God and religion and how she got there and I just looked at it on set and just went I'm not shooting that you know I don't want to know any of that why would I you know <laughs> and you know you just, so I just scrubbed it and we went and did something else yeah. because and that's that's the luxury of making a film for 750 grand because <laughs> Y y you know, and writing it yourself, because I'm not having conversations with some guy going, I've just got three pages of your writing, and them going, what, what? You know, and having I'm a breakdown. Down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm coming down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those oh. writers, those brilliant <laughs> writers. <huh? laughs> um, well, that's, that's <laughs> enough from us for the time being. So let's, let's throw it over to you guys. And if any questions for Paddy, Eddie, or Olivia, then put your hands up, and we'll have roving mics come around. Oh. So don't be shy. Anyone at all? There we go. Right in the I w uh, hi, I was wondering if you could explain um, how you came up with the title. Yeah, I'd, I'd written a monologue um, based on this character of Joseph. Um, and it was a man sitting in the chair, in, in a chair at home. And, you know, basically, um, you know, in our house, in most houses, really, you could hear people walking up and down. So when you're a kid and you're up to stuff and you can hear your mum getting out of bed and all that, it's dead handy. But, um, <laughs> you know, I suppose it came in the way that, you know, my mum was a big gal. And um, I just wrote this monologue with this character and he could hear his wife walking about upstairs and he referred to her as the Tyrannosaur. And um, it was no sort of reflection on my mum. It was never a nickname for my mum. It was just your imagination and the writing that, that you know, where it came from. But I, I thought then that it, you know, it was a really great title. And in the film, without, I don't want to reveal too much, but she's basically the presence that haunts Joseph's house throughout the film and it haunts Joseph really and you can hear echoes of her all around the house and, in, and basically it's a nickname that this character has for his dead wife I just revealed it <laughs> <laughs> forget what you just heard Don't in the last 10 anyone. seconds <laughs> yeah uh, was there ever a suggestion that you might call the film Dog altogether and continue on? I, I thought that about it right? because I did I, I, I'd said to my wife she's a great sounding board for stuff and I mm -hmm. and if I, I, I just, um, she's the first person I call. She's the first person of when I met Olivia and I, when I found her, I found the actress. Yeah. 
You know, she knows every actress on the planet because she watches <laughs> so much telly and what have you, you know, and film. She can watch anything. And I'd written it and I had the script finished and, and I said to her, I'm not sure about calling it Tyrannosaur. And she went, why? And I said, well, I just know that when this film's coming out and prior to release, when it starts to build, I've done this kind of circuit before as an actor. I thought, all I'm going to get is, you know, where are the dinosaurs? The, you know, <laughs> 12 year old kids on YouTube going, well, there's no dinosaurs. Uh, how many times have you had the, uh, the dinosaur question? Well, so you know, I, not, not to me from, personally, from you know, but yeah, there's, there's enough wise asses out there to <laughs> so know. But then you've got to understand, you know, that, yeah, on one hand, you can understand it. You're some yeah. kid going on the net and going, oh, it sounds like a monster movie, and there's some geezer in a wife beater vest with a big pickaxe handle in his hand. Yeah. And uh, you're thinking, what's this about? But, you know, I, 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 I know for a fact now that there's some very sort of on the ball film goers out there that um, do appreciate a bit of ambiguity and, and do like things, uh, you know, to be surprised by. Mm -hmm bits and pieces so um, you know you've got to have faith in your audience absolutely and if you haven't seen Dog altogether is it on the internet or I think somebody put it on YouTube so. oh, it's on YouTube it's fantastic you should check it out uh, any more questions for the guys right there and then the front row here is there another peep show series um. <laughs> <laughs> that was my next question um, hi um, I just want to ask you about um, working with Peter Mullen and how yeah. uh, you guys, Eddie and um, Olivia, how did you start to build up the characters? Like, what did you do? Did you, like, for Olivia, did you sort of look at um, women who were maybe domestically abused? Or, um, Eddie, did you sort of, I don't know, I just, I'm curious to see how you sort of started to build up the characters and stuff. Um, well, uh, for, for me, the script, the character Hannah was such a whole person that Paddy had written that there, there was anything, uh, any work beyond that was, was a sort of, bonus because it he, he'd written this whole lovely person um but i did speak to a couple of women who work for um refuge who gave me a case study a particularly nasty case study which i showed to paddy um which just uh, was so shocking uh had it been put on film i don't think anyone would have believed it um and so what you see in tyrannosaur is a, is a very tame version really of some of the stuff we read and just that sort of in the background, I suppose, informs you, you know, the, the level of fear that these people can, can feel. And, um, uh, and we, um, Paddy took me to meet some friends of his uh, he'd, you'd known for a, a long time. Yeah, yeah. Some uh, sort who of kid. She, uh, the, the woman had, had found God, hadn't she? Yeah, she'd, they she'd were basically Christians pity. and, uh, you know, they... they uh, you know, they were just good. It was good to meet them, just to, so it could inform Olivia a bit. Because I don't about know anything about that. That, that side sort of community, that's really. Yeah. You know, and 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 this woman also worked in a charity shop, but you know, a Christian charity shop. So, you know, just tiny things informed Olivia's performance. Because um, I remember the first day of shooting, um, that that uh, we we were doing this wide shot, and Olivia. We went to rehearse the scene, you know, it's the first one up and, a, a, and Peter's behind this clothing rail because he hides, his character hides away there from the world. And as she, before she walks up to him, Olivia goes up to the door and puts the clothes sign on it. And I remember that as you went to do it, you turned to me and went, you know, is this okay? You know, a, a look is that, you know, I'm doing this because, you know, your friend said that that's what she does. And I, it was just like, do what you've got to do. It's only a tiny thing, mm. but just those little things help inform the character, inform mm. the world. You know, they're, little, they're the little pieces of texture, you know, and that's why I think it's, it's sometimes important to go out and meet people and, and, and get on the trail a little bit because they're only tiny things, but they inform a lot, you know. What did you do? I don't know. I, I used your, your research. Oh. <laughs> I turned up and <laughs> Olivia had a lot of research for me to read. <laughs> so I read it. And I, I, it was in, in good, good for me because I could see the lengths to which these men would go to control their wives. But then what I have to do is I have to understand why they're doing it. The trick is not to play an evil person, it's to play... There's no such thing as good mm. or bad people, there's just unhappy people in search of happiness. So therefore I have to work, work out what these men do and, and basically trace it back. Well, how, how scared must they be in order to do this? And then Paddy had written such a great script that was very, very clear. 
I think actors make good writers and good directors because an actor's job is, in, in the maze of a script, an actor's job is to plot a journey and then go on that journey. And what Paddy's writing did was it was very easy to find that journey and to go on that. And the film is like that. The film is, an, is a very clear emotional roller coaster ride. And that's what you do. You go on, as an actor, you go on a roller coaster ride. Now, when you see a, a leading man play a part, the audience, become, the audience sit on a roller coaster ride with him. And, and me and Paddy usually play the guys who go boo. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's what you, they, you do. And so you have to plot it with that in mind. How much rehearsal time did you have on this? Very little. I don't yeah. think I had any rehearsal no, time. No, Eddie had none. I mm. just turned up and, and did it, really. Yeah, and we just sat. You know, it's very weird. I, you know, you, you've got to cast right. You know, you just got to... And the rest of it is just the communication, the understanding. The, you know, the, the, the best writing is the simple writing. It's the simple yeah. truth, you know. And um, I, I, we, we had a morning. I did a little bit of work with Samuel Bottomley, who was the little kid in the film, just to mm. get him familiar with Peter and just to make sure that we could get the, the, the right sort of reactions out of him we needed, and he was brilliant. Mm. Um, and it was about making him feel safe. And, we, you know, Peter and Olivia, we, we, we were in Sheffield. We sat across from each other one morning, read a few scenes, and, and all I did was sat at the table and just had a little look either way and went, shall we go to the pub? Because <laughs> 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 it was done, you know, it was done. It, it, it really was done. So yeah. as a director, you are every actor's dream. That's yeah, right. <laughs> come on, let's go to much the it. pub. <laughs> uh, there's a gentleman down here, right here. <coughs> Hi, uh, this is a question for Paddy and Eddie. Um, you've both done little British films. You've done big Hollywood blockbusters. I'm kind of wondering, as an actor, which affords you more freedom? Well, in my experience, the smaller films to, have, have afforded me more freedom. And, and quite rightly, you know, if you, do, if you do a big film like a Bourne movie or whatever, you... You, 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 you realise the significance of, of your gig, you know, you're a very small little cog in a huge machine. Well, that's not to say that, you know, you know that little cog isn't of any importance, you know, but it's strange for me because the Bourne movie, because Paul Greengrass shot in a real sort of low-key way and had a big sequence in that at Waterloo Station mm. and it was walking amongst real commuters um, and you had Matt Damon there and nobody really knew he was there because Matt Damon works like that. You know, he doesn't stroll to set with loads of people around him. You can walk up the street quite happily, you know, and it's a while before people... You have to stand still for people to go, there's Matt Damon, <laughs> which happened, which was actually fantastic to see because you could, uh, you know, after a while you could begin to see commuters. If you were there for too long, you'd see people then just start to go... And then you'd have to go and hide upstairs for 20 minutes and let it disperse because not only are you seeing Matt Damon, you know, you've got a few training in the morning, you're seeing Matt Damon, but you're getting off the train and seeing Jason Bourne <laughs> with his full gear on, you know, around this. <laughs> and it must have been so surreal for people. In Tyrak, I believe, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but it was very, um, y you know, it was very low-key the way that Paul did it for a film that, that, that was, y you know, that you would think is a juggernaut. Whereas my other experience of it was on Cinderella Man, and that felt more like how you would classically make a movie with all the trucks, with all the lights, with all the extras, and, and it was a period piece and with all the people. And, y you know, so it was two very different sides. But, you know, on Cinderella Man, they'd cut your scenes and not even tell you, you know, so you'd turn up ready to shoot scenes and they'd gone, you know, which was odd to me. But, um, I think uh, for myself, the smaller films, and being lucky enough to have some really good relationships with not only Shane and Pavel, but, but James Marsh, you know, and people like that. Um, I, I, I think, I don't know if you, Eddie, but it feels a bit more collaborative, in my experience, you know. Yeah, it's, it's much more collaborative. You feel more, you have more influence. But it's just a different discipline. These big films, are, uh, they're kind of like big oil tankers that are very hard to turn, and once you're on them, you're stuck on them and you've got to go with the flow. But that doesn't mean to belittle them in any way because when they're made well, when a big blockbuster is done well and you're involved in it, it's, it's an, a, a work of genius. It's fantastic. The problem with blockbusters is if you spend 80 million on a movie, you're going to get your money back because the studios are going to spend 150 million to promote it. So they're going to get people to come in. So there's the danger with these films is that there's no risk to them. You know, and because there's no risks, 
they become very mundane. There's no creative flow. When we did Sherlock Holmes, it felt like a very small movie because it was an unknown, uh, an unknown entity, you know, and we didn't know whether it was going to work, and it was a risk, and it was great fun to do, and, I think, and I'm very proud of the film. I think it was a really good blockbuster movie. You went to watch it, and you thought, God, this is a really great movie. Some of them, when, you, when you're working on them, what, what money can do to you is in any time when you're in a creative process, you have a choice, is it A or B? Now, if you use money wisely, you'll keep on having the courage to answer those questions and then you'll answer more questions and the film will become more complex and it will become a better work of art. What money can do is money can say, you can say, I don't have to answer that question yet, I'll put it off. I'll put it off and put it off. And by the time you get to filming, you have a very boring, mm. <laughs> uh, uncomplicated film. And that's what a lot of blockbusters end up being. Are you done with blockbusters, Paddy? Do you think? Oh, well, I haven't been asked to, I haven't been invited on board one for a <laughs> while. But yeah, I don't, I, you know, I think you have to number one audition to get in them, and uh, you know, pretending to swing a sword around your head in an office <laughs> in Soho. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for some romantic <laughs> monster movie thing is Living not my dream. idea of fun. <laughs> yeah, but I got the Bongi. I was walking down Soho, and Paul Greengrass went, "Oh, mate," I said, "Hey, Paul, how are you?" Because uh, what are you doing? You know, later in the year, I said, oh, nothing, mate. He goes, I might have something for you. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a call for six months later. Ah, it's Paul. And I, hello. <laughs> and so it was a really odd way of how it happened to me. That's how it should always happen, if you ask me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we've got time for one more question. Anyone got any more questions for uh, Paddy, Olivia, or Eddie? Oh, right back here. Can you wait for the microphone? Thank you. <laughs> go on, son. Yeah, I'll be mad. Uh, <laughs> just how did you find your way, like, between working with the script and the more sort of the Shane Meadows way of working or however, well, you know? Well, I, I, you know, I've been working with Shane a couple of times. Um, Shane will definitely have a script and a story down. But, you know, Shane has a way of working where he gets people to sort of improvise within the scene. Um, and then, you know, has his own methods and, and approaches to work in. I didn't do that with Tyrannosaur. You know, I was very sort of, not strict, but I was definitely certain that it wasn't an improvisational movie. I wasn't trying to find it that way. I think, it, like, the, like um, Eddie and Olivia said, the, the, this film was quite clearly written and the characters were quite clearly written. Um, so there wasn't any need to go off page or, or there wasn't anything new to discover. If anything, the, the spontaneity came from the moments, you know, on set. We did the interactions with the actors or what was going on in your vision and in the outside world, really. You know, because we set it on an estate in Leeds and, you know, one thing I learned working with Pavel Pavlikovsky was that, that the location was, was really, really important, you know. Because what he, started, what he used to do was he'd set himself in Margate for a film and then start to bring in the locals, the, you know, the, the eccentrics and characters and bring them into the movie and give it another layer of, of authenticity. So that was something that, I, that, that really stuck with me and it happened with Tyrannosaur. So, you know, for scenes in the movie, we've got the women who work in the local charity shop in one scene and we've got the community in the wake scene and a lot of little I things kicking off on the state informed the way that I went about shooting certain scenes. But that was it, you know, it was never really the same sort of improvisational place, really. Was that from, like, experience? Is that working? Yeah. Was that from <laughs> experience of acting and being in these improvised improvisational situations where you just want to sort of drop that process and just I, you I, wish I, there was a script there yeah right? I wanted to drop it you know just for my film I've got nothing nothing against it and when it's done well like the way Shane does it it works brilliantly but you know in some circumstances it, it doesn't you know and with Shane I can improvise forever and a day you know but I've been on some sets and the director's going oh just improvise and you're going improvise <laughs> what you know um but I think it was just something important to me. I, I, I realised as an actor, I was going through this process of having done a lot of improvisations and, and just realising that if you're going to have a career as an actor, you better learn how to do scripts. You like, you know, <laughs> it's sort of a, a really huge requirement of being one. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that somehow informed Tyrannosaur and the, the reason why I was so sort of dead on. I wasn't over them you know, every word like I described earlier. It wasn't that sort of militant. But it was like, no, you know, it's not, it's not a riff fest. At the end of the day, you create that world for them to be creative. 
you know, and then lovely surprises come because they're in that world and little little things happen, bits of inspiration that ultimately stay in the film. But that's creating a moment, you know. Fantastic. Uh, there I'm was a question at the back too. Oh, one at the back? Okay, yeah, great. He's well, hiding. Well, just, the microphone's Sorry. coming around. Sorry. Good eye. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Be a bit mean if we ignored it. <laughs> Um, I was just wondering, it sounds like really gritty and sort of real film, which would probably be quite harrowing for an audience. And I just wondered, in the making of it, how much it sticks with you, or whether it does, or are you able to kind of, after having been through the worst of it, switch off and sort of move on with life, or does it stick with you? And if it does, what is the stuff that does stick with you? And is it good, or is it bad, or, or what? For the actors, you mean? Um, well, no, actually, for, for everybody... Well, for me, it was different, because I'd written it as well, and then you direct it, and, and obviously then you've got a whole other process of editing it and, and, and putting it together. So I live with it for a lot longer, I suppose, and uh, I found it a really emotional experience making Tyrannosaurus. I think there was a few times that I got, you know, upset with it, because... I, I just, I, you know, it sounds gritty and, you know, and it's tough in moments, but ultimately I think we made a really beautiful movie and, 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 and we did manage to make a love story that does have hope. And, um, and so I always felt very emotional about it. I haven't seen it for, for a long time now. I, I might not see it ever again, I don't know. But um, uh, for me it was an emotional thing and it stayed with me for a very long time. Yeah. And uh, Eddie and Olivia, I'll stay with you. Um, I, n not really, to be honest with you. Um, but I was on it for a short time, mm -hmm. and also I think sometimes the, the darker the material, the more humour there is mm. on 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 set. Actors have a gallow hum gallows humour in a sense, you know. W making Vera Drake was at the final scene when you knew Vera was going to be sent to prison. I've never laughed so much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and I think it naturally kicks in because y y what you're, you're, you're doing is when the camera rolls, you're finding you're going to a dark place and when it stops, you, you counterbalance it with having, uh, having a laugh. It was, yeah, definitely one of the most enjoyable uh, experiences of my life. And uh, although I felt bereft when it was finished, but I think that was because it was such a beautiful um, it was only four weeks we were all together and we all became incredibly close and the, the, the crew, we all still text each other saying, have you seen this? It's ever so good. People like it. Have <laughs> <laughs> you know, you seen the poster? <laughs> seen the poster. <laughs> Sending each other pictures of the poster. It means so much to all of us, this film. But um, yeah, although it's, it's, it's a hard watch, it was, it was beautiful to do. <laughs> that's fantastic. I will ask one last question and that's uh, to bring up Awards. Uh, this film has been talked about as an awards contender. The O word has even been mentioned, especially in the connection with you, Olivia. Uh, how does it <laughs> make you guys feel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it a real experience, or is it something you have no control over? So you just, you know, let let it, that will, that that will I can't come even make. think about it because uh, if you do, then ultimately it could lead to very huge disappointment. Right. So in in my, uh, obviously, I think they're worthy of every every award going. But um, I, I, honestly, it's, it's such a really sort of, it's a really odd grand, all that stuff. And people get very excited. And I've seen people crushed in the final hour. And, and they've invested so much because they've actually been told, you're a dead sir, you know. Mm. And they've sat there and not got it. And it's ruined their night. And I just think, you know, my victory is the film. I got this film made and it will still be around in 10, 20 years' time. And the rest of it is, 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 a, is a fun night out. And if people want to recognize it, for awards, that's amazing, but I, I can't really go there. Mm. And uh, Eddie and Olivia, do awards matter to you guys? Do you uh, well, it's not my, uh, you know, to, to be honest with you, this film isn't my gig. Yeah. It's Olivia and Peter's gig. And I think, you know, what I'm most pleased about in the film is that people can see Olivia do what we always knew she could do. And, and it's taken, in, in fact, it's taken an actor to cast her in that because actors, underst actors love actors and they love the chameleon quality of actors. And these and people in the people who pigeonhole people in this this industry, the people in power are the people with the opinions, not the people who create. Yeah. The people who create don't have the power. The people <laughs> who have opinions have the power, and opinions are very very limited. Yeah. And Paddy is a, a is a, is a creative force, is an actor, and he can't live. And what I'm most pleased about is seeing Olivia. It's people being able to see Olivia for what we always knew she could do. Mm. Oh, Eddie. Are you starting to look at the mantelpiece and maybe going? Oh, 
underneath something. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, she's I, won an award I, already. Oh, of course, but yeah. At Sundance, I think yeah, absolutely. yeah, two awards. <laughs> you won another one somewhere, yeah. Russia, she can't even think. remember this. <laughs> <been that many. laughs> Russian money. Yeah, they never turned up. Oh, man. <laughs> we'll get on it. We'll get on that one. Brilliant. Uh, that's, uh, the film's out October 7th. Uh, thanks to Studio Canal and, of course, Apple. Uh, podcast up in a couple of days' time. Uh, but most of all, thanks to you guys for coming. And to Olivia Coleman, Eddie Marston, and Paddy Considine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.